I spent eight weeks testing and polishing my game for release. Here's how it went and what lessons I learned. Welcome back for another devlog for my puzzle game, Enig Marvel. The time is Christmas 2023, and the game is very close to my planned release date. It has all the art, code, and all 90 unique levels designed and built, ready to go. All I really had left was some more sound effects, all music, and a final proper QA testing and polish. Yeah, I know, it's very late to add in music this late in a game's development process. I'll talk more about why later. At the end of 2023, I proudly told Steam that the game would be released sometime during February 2024. I decided that I would dedicate all free time I had over the next few months to fully complete and polish the game the best as I could. So I kicked off January 2024 with a bang, as most people do with a fresh new year and a metaphorical clean slate. I started properly playtesting the game. I created a build of the game, reset all save progress, and played through the game from the start as a new player would, without cheats. For efficiency's sake, I would jot down any bugs I encountered on post-its, instead of doing the whole window alt-tabbing thing to a notes program. Being a conscientious developer, I figured it couldn't be too many bugs, right? Right? After spending a full weekend, and I mean a full weekend of two whole days, testing my game, my jumbo post-it block had lost half its weight, and I was not even halfway through my game yet. Right after this weekend, by some crazy coincidence, I received an email from Steam reminding me that the release date was coming soon, and if I wasn't ready yet, I had to change it. Because when you get too close to the release date you've set in Steam, you can't change it. So I had to swallow my pride and push the release date a bit further in time. This did lit some fire under me, and I started some serious crunch time. I work full time, but would spend the evenings after work, and pretty much every weekend, on polishing and testing the game. I finally found, purchased, and added music to the game, and the last share of sound effects. This was something I've procrastinated for ages because I knew it would be difficult. I was born deaf, and even though I can hear some with the help of fancy hearing devices, sound, and especially music, are just not that big of a part of my everyday life. I have had the mute button in Unity toggled on during all of the game's development and never really thought twice about it. Maybe this will trigger some game developers or gamers who firmly believe sound and music are important parts of a game. And you know what? I've come to realize the significance of sound and music in a game as well. Once I added in audio and turned this on while playing, the game became so much more engaging to play. That definitely goes onto my list of lessons learned at the end of this video. When February started, I had really just two hurdles left in the game. One, improve and possibly redesign the game's boss levels. And two, define the time-based star ratings for every level. Let's start with the first. In Enigmarble, you play levels divided into six worlds, and each world ends with a boss level. I had fully designed and built these boss levels. However, I've been dissatisfied with them for a long time. When I finally really started playtesting my game, I came to the realization that the boss levels were frustrating and simply not fun. I also attempted to test the game from the perspective of a novice player and discovered that some of the boss levels were difficult to understand in terms of finding the solution or the next step. So I figured I would spend a day fixing the boss levels as it was only six of them, after all. In reality, I spent at least a week. At least now the boss levels are at a point where they are challenging and fun, and much less frustrating. Finally, I really only had one big task left. Define the time-based star ratings for all levels in the game. When you play a level in Enigmarble, the time ticks down, and you are rewarded with a score of zero to three stars how long you spent. You'll need at least one star to unlock the next level, and enough stars in one world to unlock the next world. So getting the scores right is important. So there I was. I had to figure out how long it takes to play each of the 90 levels in the game, and decide what time I should place the scores of 3, 2, and 1 star. All the levels are unique and different. Some can be played through quite quickly, especially in the early worlds, while others require quite some time, even if you know the solution. 
And on top of that, most levels have time reducer pickups that had to be accounted for in the final star ratings. I estimated this would take me a week or so by working evenings and a weekend. As you'll see coming up in this video, this would be yet another lesson learned. I was continuously surprised how long it took to simply play through all the levels in my game. I guess it's a positive thing, actually. But planning-wise, not so much. Even though I personally designed each of the 90 levels, I don't remember the solution for every single one. I had to play through every level multiple times to check if I got the time-based ratings right, all while also trying to play in the perspective of a first-time player. This is something I'm still working on, even while I'm editing this video. It's a challenge to determine the ideal time for a flawless run, define the benchmark for a two-star performance, and the absolute minimum time required for completing a level. And I want to get this right, so players don't get stuck on a level and can't get further. I should have definitely started this earlier. Long story short, QA and polishing my game kicked my butt, especially planning-wise. But hey, I'm still standing, and Enig Marble is one step closer to release. Date to be announced soon. So what were the lessons I learned? Lesson 1. Start playtesting your game as early as possible. I definitely think there's a balance of testing too early on something you are likely to change later in the development. But once some parts of your game starts being set in stone or finalized, this is the time you should start testing. Don't do like I did. Wait with testing until the very end. I should also add that it would be invaluable to have other people play testing your game and giving you feedback. Other players would play your game differently than you and might uncover crucial issues. However, Enigmarble is my first game and almost nobody knows about it. I wouldn't be able to find enough people interested in playtesting it, but I hope to get this experience for my next game. Lesson 2. Don't underestimate the time required for QA testing and polishing. This was a big lesson for me. I seriously underestimated the time testing and polishing takes several times during the last few months. Even if you are smart enough to start testing early, Anticipate that testing and polishing will likely require twice the time you initially estimate. Lesson 3. Assume there will be bugs and plenty of it. This was another hit in my ego as a software developer. I thought my years of experience and my personality of being conscientious and meticulous would result in far less bugs at the end. Be prepared to handle and plan for fixing bugs for quite some time. Lesson 4. Don't wait until the last moment to add audio. This is more of a personal lesson. Juice in a game is absolutely necessary, and sound is actually a big part of this. Don't underestimate the effect good sound and music have on the final feeling of playing the game. Lesson 5. Testing and polishing takes time. Seriously. I really need to emphasize this point. This is my first time releasing a game, but I've been a software developer for almost 20 years and never have I been more mistaken in my estimates. To conclude, I have had my butt handed to me the last few months, and I'm still not done. I have learned a lot, and it's all part of the game development experience. And I believe it's worth it, because I want the players to have the best experience possible. I encourage you to share your thoughts and questions in the comments below. I would love to hear other people's perspective on this. And an announcement for Enigmarble's release date will be coming soon.